Okay, welcome back. Yes, it's uh, happy Salah to our Muslim brothers. And so, yes, we're still going to take a look at some of the issues here today. Uh, so we're joined by two gentlemen, uh, Tunde Bank Anthony, uh, an APC chieftain in Lagos, and also former DG Sports Commission. He'll be joining us virtually. But here in the studio is Dr. Omeka Okengu. He's, an, he's a development specialist. Good morning. Thank you for coming. Pleasure to be here. Good morning. Well, this morning, I mean, all over the place, the president uh, saying, look, for this celebration, he's calling for unity, nation building, everyone's saying pull together. We need to ensure we get things right. It's still a journey. It always will be. Uh, I mean, so, but um, yesterday as well, while the cameras were in town, quite a number of people thought, yes, it, it's uh, Salah, the holidays, but the, the economy, it is what it is at the moment, and so they're grappling with all sorts. But the intention is for the policies to be a lot better, and people better. I mean, uh, Chief Dele Momodu was telling us the other day, at least if you can't make me any better than what you planned, leave me where I was, <laughs> according to the proverb which he says. So let's take a look at the impact of some of these policies. Um, is it that those policies don't have any impact, they're not good enough, or the nature of the job at hand is huge and as such, there's still a lot of work to be done. Well, I'll take, I'll take, I'll take a pay off line from what you just said, from your intro. Uh, everyone's input, everybody's input. In using that word, everybody, you are talking about inclusivity. And remember that we're talking about, or we have three levels of governance in Nigeria. The local government, in fact, four levels, the community development associations, which is listed in the constitution, the local governments, the sub-nationals, the state governments, and of course, the national government. So in trying to put impetus to that word you used, everyone, everyone's input, we must look at this conversation from these four broad areas. Now, let's also now give one very simple definition to development. It's tedious, it's tortuous, requires a lot of deep thinking. So like you said, it's a marathon, it's a life journey. Okay, so uh, in trying to also now overview the policies, which I think that's the essence of this conversation this morning, we will need to also have that at the back of our mind that we're not talking about what you can go into a shop and pull out. Okay, you're talking about a process that requires everybody's input in the first place and requires even deeper thinking. It requires policies, it requires programs, it requires actions. And each of these things, you know, uh, it requires a lot, a lot of energy. It's not something, maybe we could just pull out something. Food security, for instance. I mean, you, you, we wake up and the president says, oh, we no longer have only a minister of agriculture. We now have a minister of agriculture and food security. Mm -hmm. Now, food security is an ecosystem, okay, that is linked to agriculture, but does not necessarily, you know, mean agriculture. It's a, it's a long, has a long list of uh, chains and demands. Now, the beginning will be the thinking into it, the policies that can drive it, the programs that are come out of the policies, and then the actions you use to drive both the programs and then the policies. Well, quite a lot to, you know, digest there. I know that the last time that you were here, you, something had happened. The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs had been suspended and there was a whole probe going on in the humanitarian ministry. Now, we understand that the EFCC says that, you know, 30 billionaire has now been returned to the coffers of the federal government as a result of the investigation going on into the affairs of the humanitarian ministry. There are those who are saying, look, it's taking too long. So there, there are a number of things. While we're looking at economic policies, we're also looking at things that have general issues. I, the last government, the last president, ran on the mantra of three major pillars, fixing the economy, you know, fighting corruption, and also fighting insecurity. These issues are still there, and they are issues that look like they are getting deeper by the day. The president seems to have been showing some steps with some of the suspensions that he's done or, you know, carried out so far, but it doesn't appear that it's happening fast enough. We're not getting results as speedily as we should be getting them. Um, do you think that uh, there is, this is part of the plan, or do you think that people, he doesn't quite understand yet the urgency 
of the of the message he should be sending across to Nigerians with regards to these particular areas? I, I wouldn't think so. But let's let's answer with this with this popular cartoon called Cops and Robbers. Okay, you never you never see robbers stop, and that's why you say the police never sleeps. So uh, there's no uh, society that is ideal. There's none. Okay. I mean, for every new uh, innovation you get to stop crime, some other person now wants to beat it. That, that's why you have, you know, the system of the good, the bad, and the ugly. They are always be with us. You are never, ever going to remove all the bad eggs as it were. You know, you're never going to have a system that is so clean. Yeah, that, no society is ideal, but we are far from ideal. Yeah, I'm, I'm, we're getting there. Mm -hmm. You know, we just mentioned, you know, the steps being taken. I mean, for, for once... You know, we, we were in a program together. I mean, the program we had, by the time we left the studio, the president had submitted that had uh, suspended the minister. And one of the questions that I remember, if I recall, that uh, 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 Chamberlain asked me was, what do you think government will do about this? And before the, the end of the day, the woman had gone on suspension. Yes, I mean, but she's been on suspension. So there, there's a question of, okay, somebody is suspended. Mm. It, their innocence is also at stake here. They can't be suspended indefinitely. If indeed they're found culpable, then, you know, the right thing should be done. If indeed they are found, you know, to have been above board, shouldn't they be reinstated? Well, remember, the, I think I remember I read a statement from the EFCC saying that it was, it was going to be a very long investigation and that sometimes investigations is not the woman alone, if I understand it correctly, that's been investigated now. It's the humanitarian, you know, ministry. And that's one place a lot of funds you know, where, where, where we're spent it through. Mm -hmm. So it's not something, you are talking about trillions and trillions of funds. And these were funds that were going directly, you know, to people. So I don't think it's something, you know, you can just do wish was from the statement I read from the EFCC. I don't work there. I'm not an investigator. I don't work in humanitarian ministry either. So I think the best we can do is to just allow, you know, justice to run its full course. It mm -hmm. might be slow, mm -hmm. you know, but I think, you know, surely it grinds, Given yeah, the distrust that people generally have of the system, mm -hmm. given the, f the fact that you know, there was a time when, you know, I think it was in the Jonathan era, people, when the president, something will happen and a committee is set up, people say, oh, yeah, a committee is set up and we know that's the end. Nothing is going to come out of this committee. Uh, given the distrust, because that has happened over the years, that something happens, oh, we're going to investigate it and we know that that is it. No one's going to hear anything of that investigation. The matter has died. Um, shouldn't there be, a, how would I put it now? Is it an update given to well, Nigerians? That's, that's exactly a show of urgency? That's what we're discussing now. Mm -hmm. It's the update mm -hmm. that we're discussing. There's been an update from the EFCC. And this update was as early as uh, last week. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's been an official update, and that's, that's where what I think uh, Chamberlain is referring to. Okay. You know, that they have recovered 30 billion, and, and that investigation is still ongoing. Mm -hmm. So I think what we should do as Nigerians, for me, I keep telling people this, we must be able to draw that line between politics and governance. You know, for me, uh, the moment politics is over... Do you see us about drawing that line? Yes, we must. That is what I think we should preach, and that is where we can begin to build this trust. Okay, we must stop being Igbos, Yorubas, APC, PDP, uh, whatever. You know, we must be, become professionals. We must come and then address issues and look at it, you know, as they are in themselves, without you know, lending to any political thinking or political, uh, uh, if you may, uh, sensitivities. We, we must look at things dispassionately. If we are going to be building this country, I must be a Mecca, and you must be more, and both of us must be Nigerians, okay, irrespective of who is in power. I mean, everybody says God gives power, Indeed. all right? No matter how he comes, we have a president. And for me, at my age, my status, all I say to myself is, it does not matter who is president. It matters who is sitting there. And if I'm asked to give my opinion, I'll be very dispassionate about giving it professionally. And it won't matter if it was my brother or my sister or my kid or kin. Mm. You know, let's just make it a Nigerian thing. A few days ago, I mean, we had this discussion around was, a, was the electricity tariff increase for Band A cons co customers. And I remember that we received an email from a gentleman. His name is Dixon Eka. Um, and I'm going to read it to you. And I'm just trying to get a hold of the email. Yeah, he says, uh, Is President Tinubu elected just to remove subsidy on all items in Nigeria and to impoverish the people? 
Uh, and that was the email we got. While Nigerians are yet to recover from the shocks of fuel subsidy removal and floating of Naira, with many rich people now going into multidimensional poverty, he has come yet with another subsidy removal on an exist non-existing electricity. So, I mean, this is the impression that this gentleman has. This is the feedback that he sent, given you know what has happened with the policy. From your own perspective, uh, I do not know you know what came to your mind when you heard the announcement. Of the, NA, of the NERC saying that, you know, uh, it has not been approved for uh, distribution companies to be able to charge times three what was being charged before, that subsidy has now been taken away from that band, from those bands of cus customers. Do you think that, that is a, a policy that will have a positive effect on the economy? Well, but for all the years you've known me, you've known me to be somebody who's totally and completely against policies. Uh, subsidies are given as price differential. Okay, I've always promoted, you know, policies or uh, uh, subsidies that are given, okay, as production supports, you know, uh, instruments. They're not the same thing. All right. Now, when you're talking about these rich Nigerians who are complaining, remember you also have band A to band D. I got a text. <laughs> you know, saying I was in band A. Band E, actually. Yes, band E. Mm -hmm. So it's not as if there are still people who are paying or who are supposed to be paying 55 naira. You, know, you didn't know you were in band A. I, uh, After well, getting 20 hours of, uh, 20, almost 24 hours. I'm not hours even getting band. 24 hours of electricity. And let me tell you what I do. No, I, you're not supposed to get it. It's a minimum 20. of 20 hours. I am hours. not getting But let me <laughs> tell you. You're not getting 20 No, I'm not. I can tell you that I'm not getting But I'll tell you what's happening. I am getting 24 hours of electricity in my house because I'm managing myself. The first thing I do is that I'm an inverter. And do you know what I do? Okay, there are certain things I don't run on the inverter. When they bring light, they pump water. Okay, the inverter is connected to one or two things that Madame needs, you know, to keep her kitchens running. And then we don't use the inverter in the day, we use it at night. I mean, that's what's called common sense. Okay, a lot of people are just falling and dying because they think they must live the way they used to live. Man, but I'm telling you, take a camera and follow me right now to my house. I am growing yams in bags. In my village, I have about a thousand moods. You know, of yam. I'm expecting my yam seedlings from Benue this morning. And I'm taking it to my, I'm farming. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I've done this. I mean, I'm just not starting it. I have a farm in Abuja here. Any day you want, dress the way you, you won't see more than your body. So people must learn that what makes you rich as long as it is a uh, comprado, what they call the comprado bourgeoisie, that's what they call the real bourgeoisie and the comprado bourgeoisie. Who are the comprado bourgeoisie? Okay, the people other people are carrying. You are not productive. And until you get to that point where you begin to, you know, respect production, respect labor, then you haven't started. Okay? I'm telling I'm saying this on national television. If you defer, if you walk into my, I woke up one morning and my wife had gone to set up a her sewing machine, you know, at the fire of the house. Her younger brother was getting married and every, they went and got a tailor and my house turned into a tailoring. I just started using the back door to climb up. But somehow you support people being able to understand and realize that the times have changed, Mark. So indeed, okay. the times have so, changed. But, you know, these are some of the policies that, you know, uh, a lot of Nigerians are still trying to come to terms with. Yes. When you finally found out that you were on band A and, you know, your electricity tariff has gone up times three and you're not getting the minimum 20 hours, um, is this something that you... I, I, I do not think that you were certainly happy about that, were you? Well, you see, everybody, if, if, I, if you could get one hour, you could get 20 hours because the same infrastructure understand it. No, no, that's uh, not what we were told. What yeah, we were told me, is that, oh, the reason yeah. why some people, are, and this is what NERC said, that yes. the reason why uh, some people are on band A is not because they're putting people on band A, is that in those places, the necessary investment infrastructure have been put in place, they have been made. That's why they're saying those people should pay for, for more electricity because the necessary investments have been made. That is what they're saying, man. Mm -hmm. but me and you know, it's not always the case. And what, what will qualify you to be in band A? Mm -hmm. It will be, like you said, the infrastructure that is in place to support, you know, those things. First and foremost, let us start with generation. When you generate electricity, you need to, you know, now transfer this electricity. Transmission is a lot of challenge. You have transmission, you know, infrastructure challenges. That's the truth. You now talk about the discos. 
Okay, you also have distribution challenges. Have we built, uh, you know, new uh, uh, distribution uh, uh, networks? Have we? Now, so what I'm trying to say is that this is a work in progress, and I don't think we should just start, you know, thinking that it's pulling a rabbit out of a hat. No, it's work in progress. Yeah, but okay, you know, if you can manage. Uh, like in my office now, I'm also supposed to be in band A in my office area. Mm -hmm. So what do I do? So what First, band are you in? I, huh? You're still in A, but you don't get the kind of supply that A should get. I'm not even looking at the supply. I'm looking at my management. Okay, if you give me 24 hours of electricity, I still want to manage it. Okay, if you go to most offices, you know, abroad, the first thing you see as you're stepping as have you switched off your lights? The only lights left on are the security lights. Okay, people run their ACs from morning to the next morning. Do you need to do so? Well, no, there are certain look, things for me. We need to start, you know, for me as a... I'm talking about me as a Michael Kingo. I don't know about other people. Yeah, but, but you know, okay? for those people, mm -hmm. they, it's not free. I think they pay for those things. Whatever you run, whatever... So why are you complaining? Meter, so if you can pay so. for it, then for, uh, for crying out loud, pay. That's a different thing. But if they don't get the supply, then they'll pay. If they don't get the supply that they paid for, mm -hmm. then they'll complain. They and then they, complain. You know, what they should do is to now enter into new power purchase contracts. Okay, with individuals. Uh, if, if if you want to complain, and then you can begin to now. No, you individuals know, can't do that. It see, has the, to be. The, 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 you see, for me, I think Chamberlain, we can keep going on about Nigeria, but the day we wake up and say this thing, it's it's my life. Okay, yeah, so that's what I, I was going to ask. I pack my car. I have I have for instance, cylinder cars. I'm before driving you even, the one that has six so cylinders. So take take it from this okay? perspective. Yes. Bef while President Jonathan was there, uh -huh. we complain. Oh no, this is the worst. But then afterwards. President Barry came on board. So, oh God, who told us? Why didn't we? Now we're here. Look at the similar narrative. Are yeah. we focusing on the right things? I think. I think what it is we are doing is that we are being extremely selfish. I'm like I'm how, saying how to you, you this is me. Eh? Let me let me be a little bit immodest. I'm an Igbo chief. Fairly educated. Okay. I I I am into farming. I farm. So I do not see why anybody who looks up to me, you know, I can't give him seedlings instead of money. At one time in Kujay here, when I was starting my, my resource center in Kujay, I called the whole village together. I said, for the amount of molds of yam you can give to me, I'll bring seedlings and we'll do shared prosperity. I got about 20,000 molds of yam. So you can imagine what happened when I was harvesting. I wish I knew you then. In fact, I actually called on my friends to say, listen, give me some money. It's not and, I'm, and I'm doing it. The farm is still there. Okay? If you give me money, like I said to you, when I leave here now, I'm going to take my yam seedlings from Benue. Some are going to my town in Omaya. Some are going to my farm in Kuja. We need to move away from this, oh, government needs to spoon feed me. And like I said, I said, no, by is, saying, is it spoon they are, is it big, the, the reason why they were elected in the first place, they have to fulfill it. It's not to buy you Indomie every morning and serve you. Nobody it is, says it is, it is, it is people asking for that. Where, uh, for, from, from, from the way people are appearing to be complaining, everybody is feeling this pinch. Now, we have somebody who didn't do anything. Oh, we have somebody who is not taking those top decisions. We are still complaining. I mean, a lot of people, the, the governments you, you, were, you were trying to mention, they say, oh, the man was too weak. He couldn't take decisions. Now, you have the man who has come to say, all right, this is what the problem is. Let it go. This is what the problem is. Let it go. Brother, if you have ever had a yodin mm -hmm. put on your wound, Eh? I mean, your mother held you. Your brothers held you down. Okay, I mean, when you hurt yourself, everybody say, oh, please, bring uh, Vaseline. The thing will turn into a sore. What used to happen is that your mom will hold you down. First and foremost, bring hot water with this local sponge. By the time they put that iodine, bro, you have, you've gone but, to... But they're going to be putting an iodine for 16 years. Well, but the first ah, thing is... First thing idea, that, you, it doesn't you have, finish. No, you have somebody who is not putting the iodine. Is ah. it painful? Yes. No, doctor. Well, mm. let's bring in um, uh, Mr. Tunde Bankantoni. He joins us virtually. He's uh, uh, an APC chieftain in Lagos, former DG Sports Commission in Lagos, and he's also a uh, prestigious Harvard alumni. So let's see if he's got some solutions for us this morning. Oh, by the way, happy Idil Fitri mm. to you Indeed. this lovely morning, this celebration. So uh, thank you for at least allowing us to drag you out for a bit. But um, the president is calling for yeah, yeah. unity, nation building. He wants us all to pull together, but several people still think, yes, it, it's the holiday, we felicitate with everybody. But at the moment, uh, as they say out there, the economy is not smiling. The, the policies that the government is putting in place, the feedback is, 
they have to do much more than they are now. Well, good morning, uh, Chamberlain, Nigerians, and happy idol virtually to everyone. Barika de Sala, Akwadu. Well, it's been an interesting uh, conversation going on. Listening to my brother, the chief there, the farmer. But, you know, I, I don't really understand what you want to pick from this, Chamberlain. The economy, are we improving? I've been getting by. I'm a good morning as well. Indeed, I've been getting good morning by a little you. bit. <laughs> From where we left it, I think we are. To be sincere, I think we are. But you know what? There's no magic about this. Thing. There are processes to it. There are procedures to it. And we are taking it one step at a time. And we are glad that we are not coming out of the probably our our economic. Uh, disaster in the last few months and if i could take what uh, my brother said Olisha Bakuba, about the initiative of the private sector helping but don't forget that without the support of the government the enabling environment the private sector cannot i will not be doing it so well we had government in the past who supports were sought but they were not given to the private sector and now I think this should be an encouragement to the private sector generally that, oh, the government will have my back. It's a Nigerian thing. I will be encouraged in that direction. There, there have been some words, some comments. I will not totally from the power minister. I honestly do not totally agree with him. Because some of his comments are a bit off, to be sincere. I would say that, I mean, it's a minister, but some of his comments is a bit off. If you leave your AC, you have to pay for it. Like the chief of the studio said in the UK, I mean, anywhere, put up the light, we know that. But if you don't put up the light, you have to pay for the light, period. So supply the light first. You supply the light, they put up the light, they will pay for it. So saying that, I mean, we need to learn a new culture. The culture is that there is no free lunch in free town. You got to pay what you use. I will stop there for now and I will listen to you, Mark uh, or Chamberlain. What do you make? Well, uh, j just one second, uh, Mark. Uh, let, me, let me come to you, um, you know, uh, Dr. Kengu. Uh, one, one question came to mind as you were responding to my colleagues with you right there in the studio. Perhaps it's the challenge of communication. It is very, very sudden. There are those who have done comparison between what is happening in the power sector and electricity supply now and what happens with, telecom, with the telecom sector, saying that, uh, you know, then Nepal was, I mean, NITO was this and that, but um, then the revolution of the GSM came and everyone is now able to use it, even though it's a lot more costly than what we had in the days of NITO. In those days, the option there is that, that we had more than one. Now, every Nigerian is practically restricted to just one option and no other option at this time. Perhaps the challenge is that of communication, how government has you know, interfaced or not with people, but just for them to sleep and wake up to this particular news. What do you make of that? How can we ameliorate that? Uh, let, me, let me also recall uh, a conversation I listened to. Uh, with a gentleman, I think his name is Prince Ado Ibrahim, uh, and he was talking about a project they were supporting in Adamawa, uh, and they were generating their own electricity, and they had done this for close to 12 years. Uh, he also mentioned that, that this was electricity from the sun. Uh, I am one of those advocates of renewables, and maybe in the course of the conversation, we might begin to now drill it down to you know, what the real major challenges are. Nobody is talking about climate change and adaptation and mitigation strategies. Nobody is saying that the world has completely changed, you know, because of just, you know, weather, weather fluctuations. So you're right. Yes, I mean, at, at the time, electricity, they were begging people to come and take it in Europe. They had gone the way of renewables. Okay? If you remember, if you recall, you can fact check it. You know, what they did was that they put in a lot of money you know, into uh, renewables and then alternative energy sources, okay, from biomass to, to methanol to, I had done 
you know, uh, uh, a full business case for a ministry for their methanol project. So I understand what, you know, what we can get from just going the way of renewables. Uh, there's what they call the thermal uh, ocean uh, solutions. I mean, look at Lagos State. Uh, people are now, OTEC has become the new technology. It's, it's been there for 50 years. You can actually generate over 300,000, you know, megawatts of electricity by just throwing turbines into the sea. So Lagos should be able to bring as much. We have a coastline of 800 kilometers. Not one turbine is anywhere. We are not doing any OTEC, you know, thermal, uh, ocean thermal uh, projects. Now, you're not even talking about our biomass. You're not talking about our sun. So if we are fixated on what we have now, of course, it, be, it turns into a monopoly. Every monopoly ultimately becomes a monster. You know, so I think it's, but again, like if you remember my intro, Yes, we are talking about the federal government here. What about the local government areas? Where are they in this mix? You are talking about this policy. I mean, most of the people who are supposed to be enjoying or suffering from these things don't live within the federal capital territories. They are in the local government and are in the state government. So you are right. You are very, very right. We, we must go you know, the way of renewables. And I have one in my house not only here in my village, not only my village, you know, my farm. So, and I'm promoting this. I, I, you, this, this might surprise you, maybe if you allow me, I could bring him as a young Nigerian, 32, okay? They have actually gone to Sweden, you know, to start to establish uh, a solar production uh, plant in Sweden because they saw that niche there. Now, did he try to do it in Nigeria? Yes, he did. Did he get anybody to listen to him? Of course not. But they, are, they, are, they have raised, in the last account, from what it is he told me, about 30 million euro, And they are raising more money. So it is all about us not understanding that our major challenge is that we've not been able to fix science and technology and innovation where we are supposed to situate it. Well, Doctor, you know, one, one of the... I, I get that, and I mean, you've picked on the uh, one particular perspective of the question to respond to, which is uh, the options that are open to the states, especially now that uh, we can say that the electricity sector has been sort of democratized, so the states themselves can champion that. But the issue is that of communication. So let me ask our, our guest on Zoom also uh, this particular question. It, the issue now is exactly how should... The government have communicated with the people, Mr. Bank Anthony. Perhaps that's one of the challenges that people are dealing with. They just slept and woke up to it. So now the issue is out, the bird is out of the cage, and um, the cat is out of the bag. People are dealing with this now. There are reactions now. Even Labour, on the front pages of the papers this morning, we heard Labour saying, well, the initial minimum wage agreement, we're going to have to renegotiate it to 300% more. How do you think government should manage this communication now? Not just the federal government, but the state governments as well, because one way or the other, it affects them as well. How should we ameliorate this situation through communication? Well, thank you. Thank you, Ayo. Good morning. Well, the last time I was with you, I was able to say to you clearly that one of the things we need to do is communication. Uh, and with that, there are so many platforms now to communicate with people. And like I said earlier, if you look at the issue of the power supply, the Minister of Power, I mean, his communication was, was not good enough to be sincere, right? And I said to you the last time, we need a lot, we expect a lot from the National Organization Agency, right? That is a very key role. They have a very key role to play, so as the Information Ministry as well. To, to, to tell somebody to effort in a nice way, they will embrace you. But tell them in a very nasty way, they will react to you. So the, the bottom line we have now is how do we communicate all these new challenges, new development, new costs to Nigerians? I mean, it's, it's far beyond the, the issue of electricity or what have you. It's at the end of the day, how much more do I have left in my pocket? And let the government spokespeople be specifically clear about what they are getting in return. Do you understand me? What, what are they getting in return? Are the schools good? Are the hospitals good? Are the roads good? What are we doing here? 
what are we doing there? We need money to do those things. So you need to let them be aware of development that is going around in the country. You understand? Because all these things cost money. And the, the, these new charges, these new increments, is not just in Nigeria. The, the, the cost of living has gone up everywhere, to be sincere, since COVID and still going up. So, and I will definitely, like the last time, <laughs> people are telling me I, I was pushing more to the people's table. No, it's a work in progress. There must be a synergy between the government and the people. There must be, there must be an understanding that, you know, this is what we are doing to help. This is what we can do, right? There must be a meeting point of equilibrium, how we can progress on this matter. Now, the topic this morning by, ch by channels is... Just, 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 a mess, just, just one moment, uh, Mr. Bank Anthony. Let's take one quick message and we'll be right back to continue this conversation. Thank you for staying with us. Well, Mr. Bank Anthony, one of the things that may also have been considered by a few is whether or not the states are in partnership with the federal government with this policy. Yes, we recognize that it's the NERC's call and it's the NERC that's made this decision. But then it is in the states, as uh, Dr. Congo has said, that the consumers exist. It is in the states that they uh, experience all of the things that they experience and the consequences of these policies. Do you see a role, Mr. Bank Anthony, for the state governments to at least try to pacify the people or intervene, some kind of intervention that can make things a little easier? Because people are complaining whether it's residential or small businesses, even big businesses will pass on the costs. So do you see a role for the state governments in this particular situation? Down. You see, as, as I said it the last time, the system of government we are practicing is too cumbersome. It's far from the people. And even the state government are making it even worse by not empowering the local government. The state has a role to play. I mean, the state can partner with private sector because the whole uh, command system that everything is done from the center, from Abuja. You understand? I mean, it's a problem for us. So the state will keep pacifying. I mean, whether they call it uh, what is the goodies now, palliatives, right? It's not. It's only about food. No, to give people food. How about the other things they need, they lack. So it must be bottom of approach. It must, it, it must start from the bottom to the top because whatever the federal government is doing, whatever the Minister of Power is saying, right, must have a local effect on people. Not the people sitting, sitting on the table with him. So there must be a way because even increasing salary will not solve the problem. The moment you increase salary, your only gallery will, will increase their own gallery uh, money. The drivers on the road will increase their own transport fare. So there must be a kind of organized system, organized solution that will touch everybody's life Right, I make it easier, but that centralized system that everything has to come. A minister, a, a minister will make a statement that we want to affect everybody in the country in that sector. I mean, I, I, what about implementation? The last time I spoke to you, I said to you, security, DSS, where are they? Where's the DSS all over Nigeria? You understand me? So, for me, we need to understand that that system. There must be a, de a clear delegation of power. Like the local government must be taken very seriously and given enough function, enough responsibility to do, because they are the closest to the people. There's no way you want to have a local government that is not doing anything. I mean, even the military gave local government a lot of opportunity to, to, to operate, to function. And at the end of the day, you can't keep running back to Mr. President. You have ministers, you have DGs, you have directors. And you know that Nigerians are very impatient. Even in six months, they were telling him to, to the trouble this cabinet. You and I know clearly 
we know clearly that it takes a while to learn on the job. You understand me? And governance is not the team part. Even you, the, even you in the studio, how long does it take you to first face the camera and perfect it now? You are, you are a household name in Nigeria, so are uh, Chamberlain and Malfoy. Go back to your first So we must give people a chance to learn on the job. But having said that, to be sincere, our system of government that is, that is so specified, the state government must give the local government the, the, that responsibility, that role, the freedom to operate in their domain. Otherwise, whatever is happening at the center, we will be groping in the dark. It, it, it can never be a reality that you are passing the message from Abuja and if you want it to go down, the local government has no role to play. It will not go down. All right, uh, Dr. Kegu. All right, uh, Dr. Kegu. Yeah, so, so let's wind down on this. I mean, I think that needs no telling. A systemic approach to what we need to do such that that challenge, I mean, it can be clearly seen when that is done. But this local government component is something that lots of people keep talking about, but we never seem to be moving an inch towards addressing that challenge. Not very, not very. Uh, some states are, are doing well. Abia states, I want to commend. Uh, they look for the power sector area. No, you're generally. talking about you're talking about local governments. Yes. Now, I think what's what what's even missing is is one R, which is called the rail sector, in developing this systemic approach that you're talking about. Uh, I think that if I were to advise or suggest to the president, I would have said rejig the neck. The National Economic Council to what to include the rail sector because everything that we've talked about in Nigeria. I mean, this time you talk about private public uh, partnerships. Now you're basically talking about departments, if you may, relationships have existed. Okay, you're in government, you're you're public, you leave government, you're private. So wait, does it need to reduce the neck? Because I think they put in place another economic council. No, you see, the the the, the that that economic council reports to him. It's his creation. Now, the neck is a constitutional, you know, body. Okay, and the moment you get the neck to begin to function, and then you, you recreate this Nigeria that everybody wants. And each time we have this conversation, I say to you, if we want to talk about food security, you cannot talk about food security exclusive of what portion, what volume of land is available for you for cultivation. What technologies are you putting on that land? Who manages it? And then what infrastructure are you talking about? And against that, and this is very important, you must look at every Nigerian vis-a-vis -vis the nutritional needs of each and every one of us. So that when you're talking about food, you are not just bringing food as food, you're bringing food as nutrition. And in that case, what you have on the table could be food. All right. Okay, that's a place where we'll have to let it go. Dr. Emeka Okegu and uh, Shiva Tunde Bakantone, thank you both for coming on this morning. Well, said we'll be eating some food this salad, wouldn't we? Well, it depends on the nutrition <laughs> for that. <laughs> what you have there could be food. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs>